This is what we would call a diazonium, cation. Diazonium. Incidentally, azo means nitrogen. Azo means nitrogen. So diazo means two nitrogens. So this is a somewhat logical name because we've got two nitrogens here. This is a cation because there's a positive charge. Nitrogen normally likes to have three bonds. A nitrogen with four bonds has a positive charge. Now we need to know we can make these diazonium cations out of aniline. So we need to know the reagents for that. I don't know if you happen to remember those. NaNO2 and HCl. That's right. I think you guys were maybe thinking of using that on some of the earlier problems, but here's where we want to use those reagents. This is sodium nitrite and hydrochloric acid. Sodium nitrite and hydrochloric acid, NaNO2 and HCl. Incidentally, the whole purpose of this is that these actually make nitrous acid. These combine to make nitrous acid, and it's really the nitrous acid that facilitates this reaction. It just turns out that nitrous acid is unstable. You can't store it in a bottle. So instead of storing nitrous acid in a bottle, you store these reagents, and when you put them together, they create, um, in the flask, they create the nitrous acid that you're going to use in the reaction. I don't think we're going to go through the mechanism for this. It's more important to see how to get to the products here. So. If the mechanism was important, your instructor would have mentioned it in class. There's not too much insight from that. So we'll just memorize now how we can go from here to here. Now, by the way, notice this is not an electrophilic aromatic substitution anymore. This is a different reaction that turns this nitrogen into this over here. So this is how we make a diazonium salt. Now, actually, it would make it like this, because the counter ion would be the chloride from the hydrochloric acid. So this is usually referred to as a diazonium salt. Salt is just another name for an ionic compound. Now, what good is this? We don't usually want diazoniums. So what good is this? Well, does this nitrogen look like a nucleophile or a leaving group? The thing that this is good for is this is now an excellent leaving group. This is now an excellent leaving group. Which can leave. And when it leaves, it leaves a positive charge behind. So now we're making benzene electrophiles like, instead of nucleophiles, which we had always nucleophiles. That's right. This is one way to make a, the benzene into a electrophile. That's a, that's a good analysis. You're right. When we were doing electrophilic aromatic substitution, the benzene was acting like a nucleophile. That's a very good point. Now we're seeing a way to make the benzene electrophilic. There, we're, act, we're actually going to see a bunch of different ways to make benzene electrophilic. This is only one way. So this is one way to make this electrophilic. Notice that this does not interrupt the aromaticity. We still have the six pi electrons. So this is now more electrophilic. And now nucleophiles can come in into this position over here. And we can put nucleophiles here. Um, the common nucleophiles here, I think, are halogens and cyanide. For example, if we had a cyanide floating around, well, we certainly like to attack over here. And now we have the cyanide group over here. Now, this should make us happy, because if you think about it, we haven't learned any other ways previously to put cyanide on, have we? So this is the first way that we've learned to put a cyanide group on. So that's uh, one advantage of this reaction. All right, now uh, I was kind of skirting over a couple of issues here. So let's explain this a little bit more. Okay, now this is a somewhat of an oversimplification here. You can't normally just add a halogen or a cyanide in order for this to work. You have to add it in the presence of copper. For some reason, the copper helps the reaction to work. We won't go into all the details here. That's right. We already had ways to add the halogens. On the other hand, we didn't know ways to make nitrogens into halogens. So even though now we, we knew how to replace a hydrogen with a halogen, now we know how to replace a nitrogen with a halogen. And we didn't have any way to add cyanide. 
So now we have a way to add cyanide as well. All right, so I said, like I said, the basic reaction that's happening here is that the, di the, the two nitrogens are leaving, and that makes it easy for these nucleophiles to come in. The exact mechanism I put on the board was probably an oversimplification. I think there might actually be some radical mechanisms or something going on here. So you probably wouldn't be expected to draw the full mechanism. But the point is that we can kind of see how when the two nitrogens leave, these can nucleophilically come in and replace them. I think these are called what, Sandmeyer reactions? Yeah. Did you guys hear that name? All right, so these are the Sandmeyer reactions. All of them, or yeah, I think all of them. Making the salt. Oh no, this step over here, I think, is the Sandmeyer reaction. Uh, the book seems to usually use heat for these. So, for example, suppose you wanted to put cyanide on. Well, what would be the uh, immediate precursor to that? Well, we need the diazonium. And where did the diazonium come from? NH2. Came from H2 and the sodium nitrite plus HCl. But where did this come from? NH2. Pardon? HNO3 and H2SO4. And then that being done with h 2 and Good. So you're remembering that the nitric acid doesn't put an amine on, it puts the nitro group on. So in order to get the amine, we have to then do a reduction. We saw a couple different ways that we can reduce the nitro group to the amine. So putting them all together, there's quite a few steps here to say just put the cyanide group on. If you just wanted to put the halogen on, you could just do a normal electrophilic aromatic substitution. But if you want to put the cyanide, there's one, two, three, four different steps. Let's do this synthesis. First, we can add the NH2 or NH and O3. And sulfuric acid. And what group will that put on? NO2. You got it. Can we skip that whole part and just add Cl2 and AlCl3 to get one Cl on? And then so you're suggesting that we should just start by putting the chlorine on? Because isn't that the whole purpose of doing the NO2 first? Let's see. So we can start by putting... Um, you just have to add the equipment sink. We can start by putting the chlorine on. Yeah, this, uh, this might work. And then you would uh, add the bromines. Yeah. Add the now, after we add the chlorine, is it going to be easier or hard to add the, the, the next bromine? Uh, hard, but it would And then be. after you've added the bromine, is it going to be easier or hard to add the second bromine? even harder. So maybe it might be hard to get all three bromines to add here when we've got so many deactivators on the ring. So there might be a superior uh, approach here. So maybe it's better to go this way. Um, but you know, um, I don't know, this might work too. This might, be, uh, this might work fine. I don't know how picky people are about this. So instead,
Let's try this synthesis.